On several occasions, the Persians attempted to break into Europe, yet repeatedly were pushed back by the Greek cities in battles such as Salamis. Philip II of Macedon, during the days when the world took place in the Minecraft universe, decided to unite the Greek city-states into a single confederation. All one city-state fell, Sparta. This was achieved at the Battle of Chironia, where the cavalry's duty was to charge headfirst into the phalanxes and break the most elite unit in the Greek world, the Sacred Band. Upon Philip's death, his son Alexander took the throne. A whole 40% of Sparta were unhappy about this, so Alexander had to lower the tax rate. However, luckily for him, 110% of Pella was happy, so he could raise the taxes there instead. Parmenion sails first into Anatolia, with a reasonable force, where he is met by a large Persian army. Parmenion, holding the rivers, manages to defeat the army at the same scale as Alexander would have done. In fact, all Macedonian generals seem to fight on the same scale level as each other. You may begin to believe they are all secretly controlled by one person. Alexander sets off to Byzantium, where he just happened to know there was an ambush waiting for him. Byzantium was a minor settlement, with no real significance at the time, yet still was for some reason important to Alexander and his map. It's almost as if he knew the historical legacy it would build. Meanwhile, the other generalless army would be tasked with clearing out the Illyrians. They will succeed, yet after Alexander's death, the Illyrians will rise up and become the new Thrace. Meanwhile, the Thracians will migrate and become known as the Greek city-states. Alexander crosses into Anatolia with his fleet. He must act fast, as he knows the exact day he is going to die. He must control all of Persia. If he is a single settlement short before his early death, then the world will forget him, and the Persians will be victorious. Alexander's first battle here is Granicus, which unfortunately, for the Persians, they seemed to choose the only river in the world with more than one crossing. Alexander begins his conquest, taking settlement after settlement, always taking advantage of the strategic river crossing sites and bridges which the Persians fell for. Every single time. The Macedonians exterminate the populations of every settlement they take. A good genocide always creates a happy population and solves all problems. It lowers the population, affecting development in later years, but with a growth rate of settlements being at around a 50% population increase per year, they end up recovering rather quickly. Alexander's next major battle is the Battle of Isis. It was hoped by the Persians that the anti-gravity of the river would affect Alexander's army. It didn't. Alexander won yet again. Alexander swoops in, conquers Egypt and then leaves as fast as possible. Egypt having overall no effect on him. At this point, he had cut off Persian access to the Mediterranean. You would think the fleet would collapse, but the Persian ships just survived out at sea instead. At Memphis, Alexander captured the pyramids. This boosted the loyalty 
of all who support the Egyptian culture. However, at this time, there were no ancient Egyptians. It's all Persian culture. Ancient Egypt would arise later, at around 270 BC. Alexander conquers the most difficult to control region in the world, Petra. Then he faces the battle of his life, Gorgamela versus Darius himself. Alexander charges the left flank, takes out the calf, and heads round the back after Darius. Darius's unit of phalanxes turns around and the plan fails, but luckily the Cretan archers send the elephants berserk, who will then turn around and chase Darusius away. This was at a time when they were loyal to the Greeks and only the Greeks, rather than just being a simple mercenary unit. This battle also took place in the pre-cowboy hat era. Dabius, however, no matter how many times he was stabbed or stamped on by the elephants, survives and flees the field. Alexander proceeds to kill the Persian king Debi, capturing both the capital and the great city of Babylon. This has no effect whatsoever on the Persians, who continue to fight. Alexander storms ahead and comes face to face with the barbarian hordes in the north. Despite every unit of theirs being a strategic counter to Alexander's army, Alexander continues to secure numerous victories and eventually finds himself heading for India. India, a land that is unreachable due to a massive, impassable river that leads Alexander to a sudden halt. A massive river that seems to shrink or almost disappear at the Battle of Hydapsis. Yet Alexander went back across the river onto his side and then the river grew again to be impassable. A general of Alexander's takes a barbarian settlement to the north, achieving the required amount of land needed for it to be classed as a victory. Boom. Alexander drops dead. And the empire is left to his ambitious generals. Reason for Alexander's death, Alexander was too OP, and so God, rather than fixing the issue, did the creative assembly strategy of just deleting it altogether. That right there is the history of the world, according to Total War. Episode 1, Alexander. Join me in two weeks' time where I shall cover Roman history, according to Rome 1 Total War. Please share the video with anyone you think would be interested. I have been Darius, and I hope to see you in the next one. For now, goodbye.